we don't often think about where our food comes from, but farms like this produce some of the nation's favourite items. But that can come at a cost to nature and to our environment. So working with farmers and suppliers to find new innovations to help produce the food we love to eat the most is more important than ever. I've come to this vertical farm to see that innovation in action. It's the strawberry guy. Hi, <laughs> good, good to, to meet you. Me. How are you? Yeah, welcome. What to you is vertical farming? Vertical farming is a high density uh, farming operation where you control every aspect. This is the solution that we think is correct for the future because it has, it's delivering in terms of volume, it's delivering in terms of quality, but also we're tackling some uh, quite important um, climate change uh, drivers in terms of CO2 reduction, uh, reduced water consumption at the same time. Obviously this is an amazing innovation itself and that innovation is constantly moving forward. What's the next bit that we need to happen? I think um, there needs to be some national support for this type of project to secure food for the future, to reduce emissions and to reduce the road miles that are happening today. Hey Callum, how are you? Hello James, good to meet you. Nice to meet you mate. I was just enjoying this view. My gosh, it's incredible in here. No, it's very, very impressive, isn't it? Can an overwhelming amount of emissions in this business model come from this part of the business? How do you manage that? How do you reduce that? Produce comes from all over the world and the supply chain is very complex. I think berries is a great example of a real challenging area to manage because of the need for supply all year round. However, we can address that with new farming methods in the UK. Presumably we are at the forefront of that innovation. This is pretty cutting edge, yeah. Certainly if we're thinking about challenges in supply, maintaining really the best quality berries, you can obviously really control that in an environment like this. Structures like this and more structures like this, if we can invest into it in the UK, it supports UK agriculture. Well, I'd love to have a little look around and obviously try a strawberry at some point. Oh, but absolutely. Can we yeah. go for a one though? Hey Gemma, lovely to meet you. Hi James. I really want to get stuck into the supply chain side of things. It's a big part of the carbon emissions in the business, where our stuff comes from. What are the kind of biggest problems you face in that sector? Yeah, well, we look at Tesco scope three, it literally, you know, make up more than 90% of our emission in total, of 50% of which coming from the upstream, from commodity production to, you know, how our food are manufactured to the logistics, you know, shipping you know, transport into our stores. Um, that, that's the entirety of our supply chain impact. And where all this amazing stuff comes from obviously has a, an associated carbon cost. Absolutely, we have been focusing on, you know, making sure our products, our produce, as well as commodities, not contributing deforestation. What specifically are you doing to stop deforestation? One of the main challenges in stopping deforestation is soy. It's a key ingredient in animal feed which contributes to deforestation and one that requires industry-wide action. That's why we are working together to ensure the soy coming to the UK is deforestation and conversion free. Considering Tesco's footprint is still small, relatively small on the global scale. So we have to you know, come together, industry work together, as well as with NGOs, governments, all of us have to chip in to make it happen. Let's talk about the UK. Do we have similar problems here or are the problems different? We have long-term relationship with Tesco Sustainable Farming Group. We have been implementing some real innovations. Take, for example, leaf certifications, improving soil health, improving biodiversity. In general, it's really encouraging our farming communities to take a step forward into net zero. What is the, the one thing that's sort of maybe holding you back a little bit from doing perhaps more? I think we just need to have the commitment translating into industry-wide action, including greater investment in agriculture, in other innovations that are going to help us transition into net zero. We've all got to pull together to make it happen. Well, it's been so nice to talk to you. Thank you for your time, Gemma. Thank you. The innovation is here in the way that Tesco grow and source their produce. That vertical farm is beautiful for the strawberries and the way Tesco is tackling deforestation in the supply chain is essential. But that innovation only works if everyone's pulling in the same direction. We need farmers, we need supermarkets, we need governments to come together and work towards one common goal, reducing the carbon footprint in the supply chain.